Today we're gathered to do our annual cosmonaut catch up where I get to talk about all the things I missed because I missed a lot. A lot of shows that people have been telling me to review, a lot of movies that people have been telling me to talk about and I was busy making those Lord of the Rings videos so I didn't get to do them. And no, Black Adam is not on the list. <laughs> I hate to break it to you but uh... I still haven't seen Black Adam. I didn't write down the full list. Um, and I didn't really think about this. I don't know what I'm going to start with. Let, I'll just I'll just go in a random order. Um, let's start with let's start with Mithrigan. Now, I'm a little I got some words for Mithrigan. I didn't think it was that good. I was expecting it to go harder. Um, also the biggest problem is this entire trailer, not this one, but the next one, trailer 2 gives away the entire film. If you've seen this trailer, you know everything that happens in the movie. You you know you know every every bit of the movie from this single trailer. Oh no, she kills this guy <laughs> in the trailer. <laughs> like this happened. Like the whole movie this is the whole movie. <laughs> it's not a long movie. So showing every set piece is kind of fucked up, you know? This is from the people who did Malignant. And Malignant was fucking hilarious, all right? Uh, Maligma Balls. I expected it to have, like, a point where the movie just goes fucking crazy, like Malignant does. Mal Malignant is, like, a normal horror movie for, like, a third, and then it gradually gets more strange <laughs> and ridiculous until it, like, explodes into absurdity. And at the beginning of Megan, there's, like, they have, like, this really funny, uh, like, fake commercial, fake toy commercials that are really funny, and it's really hammy and campy, and I was kind of thinking it would do that more i was kind of thinking the movie would would keep that energy and it did not it kind of plays it safe everything that you think will happen will happen exactly the way it happens it's such a normal horror movie and i feel like in the second one they're gonna go a little harder they're, they're gonna realize the memes that that gay people love this movie it's very predictable anyway i think we'll give it a five for now i don't think i'm gonna like it more as time goes on so if it was a six it would go down to a five all right, let's talk about Hot D. I quite liked this show. I had a long, hate-filled video about Game of Thrones and how it dropped the ball. And this show is like when Game of Thrones was good. <laughs> yeah, King Viserys is the best performance. He is so good in this show. Matt Smith is really good. I have a complaint, though. I have a complaint. So the cool thing about this show is that I like that it has time skips. So unlike Game of Thrones where you're watching it kind of in real time, um, from episode to episode, they may take like five years or ten years. So the characters will grow up, right? Like this is the this is the girl at the beginning of the show, and this is her, in the, you know, by, by the end of the season. And I think that's kind of cool. It reminded me of like Fire Emblem. However, <laughs> Matt Smith does not age... <laughs> He's like a fucking vampire or something. They do nothing to change how he looks. He stays looking like this for the whole show. <laughs> and his brother goes from like a regular looking guy to like a ghoul. Just give him like old man makeup. That is it. Just give him old man makeup as he ages. Or give him young man makeup when he's younger. Something. You gotta give him something. And I get it. The king was sick. And he was literally deteriorating. I get it. Visually, <laughs> it does not make sense that Matt Smith, in like the, the over, like the 20 years that the show spans, he looks completely, he looks exactly the same. Uh, also, the, the wigs on the black people are horrible. Um, they look like shit. What'd they do to you, bro? Other stuff, like, there's like an in-between like era where like her kids the the middle actors i feel like are better than the actors that come after like for their adult selves so it's an ambitious idea to have like oh we're gonna do like this time this this generational spanning story but then you're gonna notice stuff like it's gonna pull you out there's no way it's not gonna pull you out. also the lighting in this episode right here look at this 
It doesn't look as bad to you guys, but this whole episode was pitch black. Apparently they shot it during the day and they had to make it nighttime afterwards and it just does not look good. Um, yeah, these are all little tiny nitpicks that aren't, they don't really affect the story at all. They're just going to pull you out every once in a while because the performances are really good. And the story is very, very gripping. If you like show, if you liked when Game of Thrones just did the politics stuff and the spicy, spicy interpersonal drama, that is the whole show. I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, and I'm going to give Hot D. I'm going to give it like, I want to give it a nine. I really like, this is my favorite, one of my favorite things I watched this year. I'm going to be watching Game of Thrones when it was in its early years. It Rating system doesn't matter. It matters to me. 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. I want to talk about Avatar. Let's talk about Avatar. I was one of those people. Some of you may know how I feel about Avatar because uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you, 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 you will know. But not everybody does that. Some people don't know my secret opinions. Be serious? Listen. I am serious about it. I saw Avatar when it first came out in theaters, not in IMAX. When I was a kid. Me and my friend, we went to go watch it and we were like... We, we watched it, and we were not impressed. And I remember everybody in the theater clapped. And I looked around, and I was like, what the fuck are you people clapping about? And that was, and then I, Avatar emptied out of my brain. I never thought about it ever again. And then I saw it on the re-release a few months ago. And I was like, wait, this is fucking sick. What? This movie's, this movie kind of rips. This movie's kind of awesome. I don't know what happened, but I really liked it the second time. But I also watched it in IMAX the second time. But now I'm at the point where sometimes I want something real simple. Sometimes I want something simple and effective. And Avatar 1 is that. So then we went to see Avatar 2. This movie's pretty, this movie's pretty tight. Looks really good. I just love Jake Sully. I don't know why. Jake Sully is an anime protagonist. He says the most corny shit. <laughs> what does he what does he say uh what does he say right at the at the near the end of the first movie before he like goes to tame the uh the giant dragon he says some shit like sometimes it takes one crazy ass plan to save the world or something like that <laughs> yeah it's an isekai exactly and he, it's so genuine it's genuine in how corny it is jimmy J james cameron he's got a plan and something about, I don't know, it's it's the simplicity of the story. It's not trying to do anything crazy yet. Apparently, <clears throat> apparently three and four go fucking crazy. I know people who worked on these movies, and they worked on them all together. Listen, guys, hear me out. <laughs> I understand that I, I, to some people out there, I sound like a lunatic, Okay. But Jimmy's got a plan. The problem with Avatar is I can't really explain why I like it effectively. It may not make you... Avatar is the kind of movie. It may not make your brain go go too crazy. You may not be thinking about a lot of stuff. But it makes your heart feel good. Sometimes... Sometimes that's all you need. I, I can tell that James Cameron has the confidence to take time on some of this stuff. And it may be a little unsatisfying when the psychic... A uh, magical girl in the in this story doesn't really do anything, but you can tell they're going to do something later. It, right, his character arc's the same character arc as the first one. Yeah, but but Jimmy's got a plan. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm giving Avatar an eight. Uh, I like it a lot. It's it, a crazy score. You guys think eight is crazy? What is what this movie make? Like eleven million dollars or some shit? Y'all are acting like it's not good enough. Come on, you all watch this. All of you watch this movie, okay? Acting like you didn't watch it and enjoy it. Come on. Yesterday, I watched three movies in one day. I did a triple feature at home. I started with The Fablemans. These are going to be really quick because I know you guys don't like real movies and you don't like when I talk about them. I thought it was wonderful. It was very dreamlike. You, I, don't, I, I am not the biggest Steven Spielberg fan. This might get my, my movie reviewer card revoked but uh i have not <laughs> fully seen jurassic park <laughs> <laughs> i 
I have okay, I've seen the movie in its in its entirety in bits. So like I've seen the first part I've seen the first chunk, right? I've seen the climax and I've seen the middle. You know, maybe I saw the middle when I, at a dentist's office. Maybe I saw the the last chunk when I was donating blood. When I was a kid, I had Jurassic Park on VHS. I had this movie. <laughs> And I don't think I watched the whole thing. <laughs> I think it's one of the only movies I just didn't... I don't I don't have a memory of the whole movie. But Jurassic Park 2 and 3, I have seen. And it's the same thing with Indiana Jones. I've seen Temple of Doom. I've never seen the third one. And I've seen Crystal Skull. And I've seen... Raiders? Like, throughout the course of my life, I've seen the whole movie. <laughs> I've only seen the bad ones? I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I like Jaws. I like Jaws. He's made so many movies that, like, you forget. He's made so... I like E.T. Let's go... Let's, let, let, me, let me get a refresher on how much shit he's made. I like Catch Me If You Can. I forgot that he made that. Schindler's List I saw in high school, and I was on a date. And I was not paying attention to it. It was a, it's a bad date movie, all right? Is a bad date movie. He made the color purple. He just be making shit. It, this is a Seinfeld episode about Schindler's List. Oh wait, you're right. You're right. Jerry makes out during Schindler's List. Yeah, that's kind of what happened to me, except for the making out part. Oh, Saving Private Ryan. I like this movie. This movie's really good. It's so, okay. I've seen, I've seen some movies. And then we get into like the weird era of shit that I'm not gonna watch, dude. Like I'm not watching War Horse. I'm not watching Lincoln. Oh, the big fucking guy. <laughs> I forgot he made the big fucking guy. And we all know how I feel about Ready Player One. Um, so the Fablemans, for those of you who don't know, is a semi-autobiographical film about Spielberg's childhood and his parents. And you can tell that this movie is very personal to him. Um... <clears throat> because it is not nice to his parents. It is very critical of them. And I think that's very interesting. But it's like it's it's not like a hit piece on his parents. It's just critical of their relationship, you know? Critical of how they uh, impacted him. I like the little the, all the little bits of him making movies. Very cute. Good stuff. If you like to if you like to if you like to create, this is a good movie for you. Um, Paul Dano and Michelle Williams are uh, a little too good in this movie. To the point where the kids don't look as good next to them. You know, the kids are very good. Seth Rogen, I, I like Seth Rogen in non-comedy roles. But he's distracting. I'm always like, that's Seth Rogen. And I like seeing him in stuff that's not just like boner comedies or like, you know, just straight up comedic roles. Uh, I liked him a lot in the Pom, uh, the Pom, Pom and Tammy, T Tom, Pam and Tommy, Pam and Tommy, that, 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 uh, little mini series. He was very good in that. I like him in like Invincible, but like he is distracting sometimes, but yeah, very, very dreamlike movie has like a soft, soft, like pass over it of like, like you can see how like soft the lighting is in this. A lot of bloom and glow. Look at look at this. This is it's very dreamlike, and I like that because of the ver one of the first lines that 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 they say uh, is his mom says that movies are dreams that you remember forever or something like that. And I'm like, and like that's a thesis statement for the movie because it's basically a movie about his memories. There's little tiny details that you can tell, like this is a very specific core thing that he remembers. Anyway, Fableman's good. Nine out of ten. Liked it a lot. Uh, then, I watched Banshees of Inna Sharon. Um, I didn't know anything going into this movie other than the director and the cast. Because I love In Bruges. In Bruges is uh, one of my favorite movies. And this is the great you know, reunion of Colin Farrell and Mr. Gleason. Yeah, Barry Keegan is very good in it. I didn't know he was in it, actually. I, I only knew these two. So every everything else? Complete surprise. Yes, it's their, their reunion reunion movie for, for fans of In Bruges. So I was down to see this, but it took me a while. But yeah, so this movie, it's definitely a lot more 
low-key than something like The Fablements. Fablements is definitely a movie where it's like, this is a movie about movies. It's going to pull at your heartstrings. And this movie is much more low-key. Um, it's very metaphorical. A lot of symbolism. And it's just about two guys who aren't friends anymore. It's very funny. Um, has a lot of comedic moments. A lot, it, one of my favorite things about In Bruges is, is just the lines and the way they say it. Like, Colin Farrell, the way he says lines in his natural accent makes it so much fucking funnier. There's a line he says where he's like, he's like, I don't like you anymore. He's like, but you liked me yesterday. I just don't like you no more. But you liked me yesterday. Like, it's just, the way he says it is funny. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wish that he could use his natural accent more. Um, because when I hear him doing, like, vocal fry american man it's just not as not as interesting i was watching minority report wait another spielberg i forgot about that i like that movie damn it steven got me again maybe the steven spielberg guy's onto something but yeah i was watching minority report and he's like i'm gun i'm government guy colin farrell and i'm like man <laughs> it's like nerfing him it's like putting a silencer directly on his face, you know? <clears throat> and I will say, this movie is incredibly Irish. To the point where if I did not watch it with subtitles, I do not think I would have liked it as much. <laughs> this is a nice, cozy movie. Nice and miserable for the last half. There's like a halfway point where the movie just completely shifts in tone and I really liked, I liked it. Um, it had me questioning what the what the themes were throughout the whole thing. I was like, what is really going on here? Is this really just a movie about about one guy ghosting another guy? And for the most part, yes, it is. It's just it's just a bunch of good performances bouncing off each other for two hours. Never felt never felt too long. I love the sharp writing. It just felt it was a good just a good sharp clean solid movie. I will give it another nine point five. We'll sit on it. Let's move on to the third movie I watched. I watched Tar. Another movie that I knew nothing about. That, honestly, that's the best way to watch movies. Don't watch a trailer. I didn't see a trailer. I saw a screenshot of like that. Of like her just in a conductor's outfit. I'm like, oh, Kate, Kate Blanchett's in it. I have no other information. I, ugh. I have more problems with this movie than I did with Banshees, but I think I like this movie more. This is a character study. People like to throw that around a lot for movies that aren't character studies, but this is a character study of one person, a made-up person, who exists, like, right now, basically. Uh, they talk about the pandemic and how it affected people. They talk about a lot of real-world stuff. This is very interesting. The final scene is really weird <laughs> because <laughs> it doesn't feel like something that should be in a movie. It's best if you don't know what this movie's about when you go into it, like I did. Because it's a, it's a very slow burn. It's a slow build. Trying to figure out what the movie's about takes a while. Um, there's a lot of jargon in this movie. Kate Blanchett's playing a world-renowned conductor, composer, and the writers did their fucking research. They talk about shit that you will not understand <laughs> unless you are classically trained in music um and at in in a lot of ways i like that in a lot of ways i i i think it fits the tone it definitely makes you feel like this character is real because she's talking about, she's talking in a way that makes her seem real um but you don't know until you know the movie shifts in tone you find out that all the things you're being shown in a really slow pace in really chilled out scenes of people just fucking talking in ways that you don't understand. They're planting seeds for you to understand what the story is going to be about. And it's not going to come up until later. Um, yes, it's well written. It is really well shot. And this is what I'll give it points over, over Banshees. Banshees is a very good, very good movie for its writing. And it does look great. Mostly for the location that they shot in. Cinematography in that movie is also brilliant. But Tar is like just edging it out in visuals the visuals in this movie are amazing the long shots in this are nuts it will just be 10 minutes of that of just of just this angle 
just on Kate Blanchett, and she is just not, no breaks, just talking as this character. And it really helps you be sold on this is a real person. Except it's not. It's a fake person. Um, so there's a point in this movie where it gets scary. <laughs> it gets spooky. And I was not expecting that. Uh, I watched this in the middle of the night. Uh, in the dark. And I was like, I'm a little unnerved right now. Because it's kind of a... It has some psychological horror elements. Like, you can see it in these shots here. There's things in the background that are only, like, in her mind. There's, like, silhouettes and people that aren't actually there. And it's... It's a little unnerving. And it definitely... Definitely fits the tone. It doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't turn into full-on horror. It does remind me of Black Swan in, in a way. But Black Swan is, like, a, bil a gradual build-up until it, like, crescendos into, like, freaky shit. This movie just places it here and there every once in a while. And then it keeps it keeps going on its way. It's much more subtle than something like Black Swan. And I like that a lot. Um, I do think the movie is too long. I'm gonna be honest. It's long as fuck. Way too long. Two and a half hours, and I, I you could trim 10 to 15 minutes off of that. And I liked watching it. But I do not think it justifies its runtime. 10 to 15 minutes isn't that much, but in the moment, a whole extra minute every once in a while where you're like, okay, I kind of get the point. We could move on to something else. That, over the course of a, of a two and a half hour long movie, you feel it. You feel the length. I still liked it the entire, entire way through, but I think it was too long. Um, but yeah, I like Tar. I gave Banshees a 9.5. Hmm. The thing is, I think I like this more than Banshees. I even think that, even though I think it's too long, I don't think it should be shortened. I just prefer if it was shorter. But I think it's good at its like Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, 9.5 again. They're all so close to, to, in quality to me, you know? I know it's not a lightning round. I can't... I, I'm incapable... Of <laughs> being concise. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, that's why I'm editing this down for YouTube. Alright, so Pussy Boots, The Last Wish. Puss in Boots fucking slaps. I was excited for this movie when it got announced. Because I saw the first trailer and I was like, sign me up. This looks good. So when people are like, oh, you know, I didn't really expect to like this movie. I did, okay? <laughs> I wanted to see this. I love it. It's funny. It has a great premise. It's really just a all-around good animated movie. It was great. I have no complaints. Um, okay, one complaint. I lied. I lied. It is still kind of a kid's movie. It has, like, the Shrek humor. They say crap and hell. It's still trying to kind of, like, tailor to the kid's demographic. The dog character, very much like a tests well with children type character. Um, but he grows on you. Voice cast is great. Uh, I love Antonio Banderas as this character because you can tell he's having fun. You can tell he fucking loves playing Puss in Boots. And it's so weird. <laughs> like, why do you love being Puss in Boots so much? <laughs> and boy, the, an the fucking animation. The wolf, everybody raves about the wolf. The wolf is is one of the coolest fucking characters. But I like Jack Horner. I don't think he's in the trailer, actually. But Jack Horner, uh, John Mulaney's character, is my favorite character in this movie. He is so... I think he was right there, right? He's such an interesting villain. <laughs> he's so much more interesting to me than the lately the villains where, like, we have to learn their motivation and we have to agree with them. And yeah, we all like a villain like that. But this is just an evil person. <laughs> He's irredeemably evil, and he loves it. And that is so fucking funny. Oh, I'm, I'm getting chills thinking about the final battle again. This movie looks so good. Look at these, look at these sequences. If, you, if you're like one of like the five people who haven't seen this movie because you didn't know it was good, this movie fucking rocks, all right? I love the animators now are the people who grew up on anime. And this is, it's, they're making... American anime. For what it wants to be, 
I really want to give it a 10, and then I won't. It's a 9, for now. Um, is it up for consideration for Shrektober? That's the question, isn't it? I don't think so. It's just too good. We would just be sitting and enjoying it. I would just be sitting quietly chuckling every once in a while and smiling that would be the whole video <laughs> i'll do a very quick this is gonna be actually quick i watched the menu a few days ago or a few weeks ago actually i did not love the menu i liked it but this one was overhyped for me a little bit i like the actors i like uh nicholas holt he's great i am a big fan of him i don't think he gets enough credit in movies, I think he's a really good actor. Who, and I think he was better than Anya Taylor-Joy in this. Anya Taylor-Joy, she's a weird one. I love her. But sometimes she's not that good, you know? But she, she always fits the tone of the movie as far as her performance goes. But she's never the best actor in the movies she's in. I I love Ray Fiennes. <clears throat> Ray Fiennes, good. This, I love every movie this guy's in. I like, I, I like, I like his performances. Again, in Bruges... He shows up in just the last third of In Bruges. Like you don't, you never see his character until the last third, and when you do, like he steals the show. Um, Nicholas Holt and him, best parts of the movie for me. I liked the food. I liked that the food tells a story. I didn't know. I did not. I watched this movie when I was hungry, and I don't know why I did that, man. I don't know why I did that shit. I, that was so stupid of me. <laughs> I didn't think the food would be as integral. Like, look at these shots. Look at the food porn on display here. Um, but other than that, I was just not sold on the premise of this film. Again, it was I found it to be very predictable. It didn't it never surprised me. I'm not saying something has to surprise me for it to be good, but in a movie like this where it's supposed to be building suspense and it's building tension, when you're not feeling the tension, it's it's not as exciting. I don't know. In some ways, I liked the message. I liked uh, the concept of service workers getting revenge on customers. And I like how that incorporates into Anna Taylor-Joy's character in a way that you may not expect. It's just that I don't like when people who make movies complain about rich people all the time. It gets a little annoying. A high-budget film pushed by the studio so hard. And the whole thing is about hating rich people. Hating the people who made the movie, you know? I don't think that it needed. Like, it's just, it's it's still very tropey, very predictable, and I was just a little underwhelmed by it. Still a good movie, but I wanted a little more from it. So I'm gonna give it a seven for now. Um, I watched Glass Onion when it came out in theaters, actually, so I saw it a little earlier than Netflix's uh, release. <clears throat> I really like Glass Onion, though I acknowledge that it's not, like, the best movie ever. It's one of those movies where I don't need it to be amazing. I need it to entertain me. I like it. It's it's having fun with itself. It is not trying to take anything seriously. And I like the way that these Knives Out movies set up all the little elements that you can use to solve the mystery yourself, like every good mystery should do. Mysteries are bad when you can when you have no chance of figuring it out on your own. Like, being able to, this is where being predictable, not exactly being predictable, but, like, being able to piece together a movie in your own head can be very entertaining. Because, like, I, I called some of the twists in this, and it makes it more fun, because the movie wants you to. It's feeding you the line, it's feeding you the, the, the little treats and trying to lead you on a path, you know what I mean? So it's satisfying when you're like, wow, I was right about that one thing. You know, oh, I, I knew that, I knew that would happen, you know, that kind of stuff. I really like the thing with the with the glass, the glass switching hands. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But that element of the of the the director lying to you is very cool. It's very that's a very fun. I like when a director lies to you to your face and and gaslights you. <laughs> you know, yes, the camera is very expressive. That's a good way to put it. The camera will like do a quick pan over to someone. It'll follow in a very. It, he knows how to make the camera feel like a character. Whenever like a, a something piques your interest, the camera's gonna zoom in. It's gonna it's it's very well done. No one can say that he's not a good director. You're just not allowed to. I'm sorry. You can hate the Last Jedi all you want. Maybe his writing isn't everybody's taste, and I fully get that. This is a very 
This movie is, is very hammy in its writing. It's, it's winking at the audience a lot. It is looking you dead in the eyes, and it's winking with both eyes back and forth. Like, do you get it? I'm okay with it, because it's having fun with itself. Hmm. I'm gonna give it, like, a 7.5. Uh, the first one, I like a little more for Knives Out. Uh, I like Knives Out a little more. I almost don't want to talk about this one, because I think this movie's so much better when you go into it blind. This movie is amazing. I don't know if it... The fuck? Um, I don't know if it's pronounced triple R or R R R. I call it triple R. If you haven't seen this movie, it's on Netflix. This is one of the best looking movies I've seen in a while. There's some scenes where like the CGI is a little rough, but this is a crispy movie. If you want to watch a movie that is just anime, you have to see triple R. Um, I'm very I'm very disappointed that it is not up for more Oscars. I'm not going to tell you guys anything else about it. I'm just saying you need to go watch it. It is so sick. <laughs> it's the sickest fucking movie I've seen all year. And it better win best song. If it doesn't win best song, I'm going to throw a fucking fit. I'm going to get mad and I'm going to start attacking people. This movie's great. Go watch it. And when you watch it, tell me how much you love it. Because, yeah. This is unlike anything I have ever seen. But yeah, I'm giving this a 10 out of 10. No question. One of my favorite movies I have ever seen. Ever. And I do not say that lightly. <laughs> this movie rocks. I love showing people this movie. Any movie that I love showing to people, that immediately gets it like three points. It's three hours. Oh, boo hoo! Go watch it! You're gonna be you're gonna be glued to this seat for every minute of that three hours. Alright? You got the time. How long have we been here? We've been here an hour and a half and we're not even, we're not even close to being done. All right? You got the time. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Let's talk about the rehearsal for a second. So I was going to make a video on the rehearsal, but I didn't. But this is my actual favorite show of the year. The rehearsal is a 10 out of 10. Period. I'm just going to throw it out there. This is one of the best shows I've ever seen. Very excited for a seat for the season two. Nathan Fielder is a is a is an artist that i respect a lot this is nathan for you on steroids it is the most ambitious shit post i've ever seen <laughs> it's meta it's sad it's hilarious every emotion that you can feel you'll probably feel it watching this and yes it's kind of scary how far he takes it when a show makes you question is this ethical? <laughs> Should I be watching this? I think that that's, I think that's so fascinating. It, it is perfect. I have no notes. Perfect. I want more. Um, and I'm probably going to watch this again very soon. I've already watched it twice. Go watch the rehearsal. That's my favorite show of the year. 10 out of 10. Pearl and X I can bang out at the same time. So I saw X when it came out. I was actually very excited for X. Because it looked interesting, and I like horror movies a lot. Horror is one of my... I mean, I'd say it's one of my favorite genres, but... What are genres anymore, you know? What genre is Banshees of Inisharan? You know, what genre is The Fablemans? Genres don't really exist to me. But I saw X, really liked it. Was a little disappointed. Again, the kills are a little unimaginative past the first one. It's a fun, schlocky horror movie. I did not know that they filmed a movie at the same time as X. I think that's really cool. So just conceptually, this is a fun idea. We film two movies at the same time that come out the same year. That is very fun. I think Pearl was a better movie. I'm going to have to see the third movie to really get a full, full idea of the story they're trying to tell. Because again, this one ends with a teaser for the third one, which is not out yet. Um, because they didn't film that one at the same time as they filmed this. But I like these two movies. They're very fun. I think X is like 6.5. Fun horror movie, but it's not going to blow your mind. And this is probably a 7. 0.5. 7, 7.5. One of those. Decent little flick. Great performance. I honestly legitimately think that she should have gotten some attention for that performance. But we know how the Academy doesn't like horror movies but my favorite horror movie 
is Barbarian. Favorite horror movie of the year, I should say. If you haven't seen Barbarian, I'm not going to talk too much about it. Don't worry. Because this, this is the epitome of, if you want to get the full enjoyment of this movie, do not listen to anything about it. Don't, don't look it up. Just go watch it and enjoy it. This movie is near perfect. I agree. I don't think I have a lot of problems with this movie at all. It is so, my God, so much better than Megan. It's not even a fucking joke. It's shot very well. For the guy's first, like, real movie, shot really well. It's directed by one of the whitest kids you know uh, dudes. I love the whitest kids you know. Um, another very inspiring group of creators in the world for me. And this movie is just full of surprises. Tweaks your expectations. It doesn't come out with it. it surprises and twists don't come out of nowhere. The trailer doesn't even give anything away. You're not going to know anything about this movie. I'm going to go back, in fact. We've already, we've already learned too much. Yeah, this movie's freaky. It's funny. It's very funny. I like when comedy dudes make horror movies. It knows how to be funny when it needs to be without being hokey. You know, this movie's not like... It, this movie has some really fucking funny scenes. And it's not like... It doesn't take away from the tension. Because it's still a lot of tension. But yeah. Good movie. 9 out of 10. What else? I think we're... I think we're out of stuff. I think we finally got to hit the last thing. All right. We're on to Andor. I wanted to say Andor was overhyped for me. But I think it was appropriately hyped. Andor is the best Star Wars thing we've gotten in a long time. It's not even close. To the point where it doesn't feel like Star Wars. And I think that's very interesting. Most of this story is people looking sad at each other and being miserable. And sometimes a stormtrooper will walk by. There were many points where I was like, I don't feel like I'm watching a fucking Star Wars TV show right now. The, the performances, the writing, the, write, the, the story is so bitter. It's, it's filled with rage. It's angry at a system. This is, the, this is the first time in Star Wars where I fucking hated the Empire. Where I was like, you know what? Fuck those guys. Kill them all. <laughs> it's very interesting that we haven't had something like that ever. Stormtroopers and the Empire kind of seen as like the hokey, goofy villain. But here, it is... You finally see why a rebellion needed to start. It is Star Wars Antifa. It really is. If there are any like right-wing people who like this show, you, you fascinate me. What world do you live in? This is the most aggressively leftist <laughs> Star Wars media ever made. <laughs> it the the opening scene of this show is Cassian Andor basically getting revenge on the police just out of pure hatred and rage. It is it's so it's such an angry show and I love that. I love the energy of the show. I really was into the prison subplot. This this story is kind of like in chunks. It has like little story arcs. The first third is just showing Cassian his backstory and where he's from. The second third is the heist subplot. And then the, the last third is the prison stuff and the finale. The prison, the, the, uh, the, the heist had me gripped from beginning to end. Um, I was very into it. This show is not trying... This scene here was actually a little goofy, I'm not gonna lie. This this felt like Star Wars. When I see Mr. Skarsgård, just wait <laughs> Blank expression, wasting <laughs> TIE Fighters. This is a one scene in the whole show that felt like gratuitous Star Wars moment. You know? You know? This is a very patient, slow show. There's episodes that are just this. Mon Mothma talking about politics. For once, they finally made Star Wars politics cool. It took a really long time, but this is the movie that the prequels think they are, you know? I was, I was, oh, and it shot so well. The performances, the presentation, and it's so funny that the fucking Cassian Andor show is this good. <laughs> Why? How? How did they make, and oh, that logo is horrible. It looks so ugly. It does not fit the show at all. This looks like a fucking Disney Channel logo. Catch Andor this Sunday. At, you know, come on. <laughs> it is so embarrassing. It is so 
deeply embarrassing that the Obi-Wan Kenobi show is so much worse than this. The Obi-Wan Kenobi show got wiped from public consciousness. I don't hear anybody talk about that show anymore. But everybody that I know was on this show's balls for good reason. This show is very good. And it looks better. It looks so much better than Kenobi. Like, just look at these shots. Look at the production quality. And I still like Mandalorian. People, like, look at this show and they're like, oh, well, Mandalorian's obviously shit now because Andor's so good. I think Mandalorian is still good because there's two sides to Star Wars. You can do this where you can tell a more grounded, realistic story. And you can do the other thing, which is tell something that's fun and silly, adventurous, pulpy even, because uh, Star Wars should also be pulpy. You can have both sides and you can enjoy both sides. There's some lines in this show that go so hard. What is it that Skarsgård says? He says, my mind is a sunless place. The way he says it, the way he delivers it, you feel it. But yeah, good show. Very excited for season two. I hope season two does not fumble the bag. Because I think Mandalorian season one was fantastic. 10 out of 10. I have no notes. I love that season of television very much. And then season two uh, becomes the cameo festival. I still think Mandalorian's fun, but I do not want this show to get Mandalorian. If I see fucking baby Luke Skywalker, I will, sh I will, I will start swinging. If I see baby Princess Leia, I'm going to start, I'm going to lose it. I like Mon Mothma. <laughs> that is all I need. Give me Mon Mothma. That's the only legacy character in this whole fucking show is Mon Mothma. What about Lando cameo? No! No! None of it! Keep that shit out of this. We don't need any glup shittos. It doesn't rely on things we've already seen. But man, I, I'm gonna I'm not I'm gonna be very critical if there's any cameos. The show gets a 9 out of 10, it's fantastic. Honestly. As far as Star Wars shows go. I think it's still a 10. It's a 10 in a different way. This is as good as, like, this side of Star Wars is gonna get. I have no- I have no complaints, really. And if I have no complaints, I gotta- I gotta give it to it, you know what I mean? So I think that's everything that we have- that we have on the docket. Uh, thank you guys for watching this- this little rundown. Uh, we were streaming- we were streaming for a good while, so I'm gonna call it there. Thank you for watching, thank you for being my friend. Bye-bye!